today's learning target, I can divide square roots. And the one thing that you will have to remember when dealing with division and square roots is we can't leave a radical in the denominator. When a radical is considered in simplest form, then you cannot have a um, radical sign in the denominator. So we'll have to deal with that. Um, on this first problem, we have 4 root 16 divided by 2 root 9. So in this case, just like you, they don't have to be um, like radicands to multiply. They also do not have to be like radicands to divide. So we can divide this just like we would do regular fractions. So I have a 4 and a 2. 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 goes into 4 two times. So no big deal. Um, here, there's no like terms, but the square root of 16 is a perfect square, or 16 is a perfect square, I should say. The square root of 16 is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 1 is just 3. So my answer actually simplifies to 8 thirds. So that's the first example. On the second example, the 3 and the 2 can't be simplified. However, the 15 and the 80, I know 5 goes into both of those. So I can actually simplify those just like I would do regular fractions. So um, the 15, 5 goes into 15 3 times, 5 goes into 80 16 times. So in the numerator, I'll have 3 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 16, I know that 16 is a perfect square. The square root of 16 is 4 times the 2 that's already there is 8. Now this is okay to leave my answer because notice I do not have a square root in the denominator. So 3 root 3 over 8 is fine, and that's my answer. Both of these first two problems, notice that in the denominator, it's just a single term. So I was dividing by a monomial, and, and in this case as well. I had a monomial in the numerator and a monomial in the denominator. On this problem, I still have a monomial in the denominator. However, notice I have a, new, I, I have a sum, I have a binomial in the numerator. So I can't just cancel, even if I could, because the 13 wouldn't reduce with anything anyway. But even if it would, I wouldn't be able to simplify anything here. Just remember how if we had 2 plus 3 over 5 plus 3, we couldn't cancel the 3's and say this was 2 fifths. Because if the 3 is part of a sum or a difference, you can't cancel. Same thing here. We wouldn't be able to cancel. So what we need to do is we can't leave a square root in the denominator. So what I'm going to do for my strategy is I want to multiply by the square root of 13. The reason why, if you square the square root of 13, you get 13. And then I no longer have a radical. So I'll have a 13 in the bottom because the square root of 13 times the square root of 13 is 13. However, whatever I do to the denominator, I also have to do to the numerator. Remember, this is like when you multiply by something over itself, it's like multiplying by 1. And I'm allowed to do that because of the multiplicative identity. So now what I have to do, imagine that you have parentheses here. And we're going to do what we did in the last section, or the yesterday. I'm going to multiply 5 times root 13 plus the square root of 3 times the square root of 13. 3 times 13 is 39. And that is actually my answer and I would be done. Again, and you might look at that and say, but that doesn't look less complicated. However, notice I no longer have a square root in the denominator. So it is considered simplified. So on this problem, I need to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 15. So whatever the denominator is, whatever the radical is, that's what I'm going to multiply by because that gives me a 15 on the bottom. In the numerator, I'm going to multiply this and multiply this. 
So the square root of 5 times the square root of 15, um, you can, off to the side, this is 3 times 5. So I'm going to have a 5 that can come out because the 5 repeats. So I end up with 5 root 3. Root 15 times root 2 is going to be root, root 30, square root of 30. And that would be my answer. So you could have said this 5 times 15 is 75 and had the square root of 75. But if you did that, you'd still have to break this down and simplify it. Eventually, you'll get 5 root 3. So I find it simpler just to simplify it first before I multiply it out. Now, you have to avoid the temptation to cancel the 5 and the 15 because this 5 root 3 is part of a sum, so you can't do that. You also cannot simplify the 30 and the 15 because the 30 is underneath a radical sign and the 15 is not. So this is actually considered simplest form. All right, on this problem, I'm still dividing by a monomial. Now, there's nothing wrong with the 2. It's just the square root of 5 that's a problem. So I want to multiply by the square root of 5 in the numerator and in the denominator. So I don't need to multiply by the 2. That will just It wouldn't be wrong, but it's just going to make my number, my answer, where I have to reduce it at the end. So in the denominator, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5 times the 2 is 10. And here I'm going to distribute. So 4 root 2 times the square root of 5 is going to be 4 root 10. And 5 root 3 times root 5, so it's, it was a minus, it's going to be 5 root 15. And that actually is my simplified answer. Okay, so on this one, again, there's nothing wrong with the 4. The square root of 17 is a problem. So I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by the square root of 17. I'm going to have to distribute. So in the numerator, I'll have negative 3 root 17 plus. So I'm going to have to multiply 5 times 17. Now, I know 5 and 17 are both prime numbers, so I won't have any factors, um, repeating factors to um, simplify this. So I'm going to end up, don't forget the 3 times the square root of 5 times 17 is 85. And down here I'm in the denominator, I'm going to have square root of 17 times the square root of 17 is 17 times the 4. So I get 68. And that is actually my simplified answer. Remember, to be simplified, your denominator cannot have a square root. My denominator no longer has a square root. That's why this is considered simplest form. Before I go on to this next type of problem, I'm going to actually stop the video here and do a second part. Uh, because notice we have a binomial in the denominator. So we're going to have to treat this one a little bit differently.